obviously parabolas a lot of the times they are referring to projectiles all right upside down motion stop and think about this all right somebody kicks a ball all right what does the ball do it goes up and then it hits a peak and then it comes back down okay so there's our parabola so projectiles are very common okay so projectiles are very common there's other things that i could i could do lots of things it's going to get a quadratic okay but we're going to focus on a projectile for this one all right now i'm not going to write out the story problem word for word okay we're just going to think of the scenario here okay so we're going to do this scenario right here somebody's kicking a football okay so let's say it's the path of a football all right so um, they can give you these functions. And if the functions, they're really trying to depict them to be real life scenarios, the numbers are not going to be nice. Okay, normally we would think of our upside down parabolas as being like a negative 2x squared and then maybe plus a 3x and then maybe minus 5, right? We are used to working with parabolas that have integers. Okay, well, that's not real life. Okay, that's not going to depict an actual arc of a football. So what you're going to see is you're going to start seeing, especially out of the textbook, or maybe even in the math Excel, you're going to start seeing ones that have decimals as coefficients. Okay, so let's suppose they tell you the path of the football is, um, say, f of x is equal to negative 0.01 x squared plus 1.18 x and then plus two all right the decimals won't necessarily be long and complicated decimals but they're definitely going to not be integers anymore now let's kind of draw this out and kind of visualize what's happening if you can picture what's happening in your story problem okay and then relate it to what you know about quadratics and math then that's going to help you figure out okay well how do i answer the question whatever they're asking for all right, so let's say you got some dude standing here, okay, and they drop kick it. All right, if they drop kick the football, it won't leave from grounds. It's not going to leave from the ground. All right, it'll leave for wherever, however high off the ground that he kicks the ball. All right, all right, and then what's it going to do? It's going to go up, it'll peak, all right, at the vertex. Okay, and then it will come back down, and I didn't make my line long enough for my little picture that I just drew. Okay, and it's going to come back down, and it will hit the ground right there. Okay, so what is the point at which he kicks it is the y-intercept, right? Because my axis is my x-axis. The point at which it touches the ground and lands is the x-intercept. All right, how high the ball went. Okay, well, what is that point? It's an X, Y, right? So it's go to the right X, whatever that number is, and then go up Y. That Y right there is what's going to give you the height of how high that ball went. Okay, the height. Okay, so if you stop and think about those different locations, then that's going to make sense. Now, when we do the math, all right, let me pick a, a nice bright color here. Okay, so normally in just if we're if we don't, if we take this out of the context of a story problem, then what this parabola really keeps on going here forever and ever and ever and then keeps going this way forever and ever and ever, right? But then as soon as we put it in the context of the story problem, well, now we're just looking at a portion of this parabola. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and label a little bit more on here. Let's label this. I mean, I verbally said it, but I don't know if you're going to remember this. So that's the y-intercept, clearly. All right. And what is that? That's the height. Um, the ball was kicked from. Okay. And then let's label this one right here. What is that? That's the x-intercept. Okay. And the x-intercept is the... Um, it's the point at which it lands, all right? But if I think of what that point is, it's an order pair x, y. So I would, from the origin, I would go over x, okay? So it is the distance from the kicker, okay? Wherever that kicker was standing, it's how far away from the kicker that the ball landed, okay? And then um, this up here we said was the vertex. We know that's the vertex. 
Okay, now let's um, actually add some more about that vertex. All right, so how do we find the x coordinate of the vertex when it's in this form? Well, we do that uh, negative b over 2a for the first one, and then we calculate that. That gives us the x coordinate of the vertex, review from algebra 2. And then you take that number and you plug it back into the function to get the y. So we denote that as f of negative b over 2a. Okay, so just funky notation, but now we ought to be really good at this and, and understand what that notation means. Okay, so labeled everything there, so that should help with maybe some story problems. Okay, so let's do, I don't know, let's do a part A. Let's go ahead and just leave it here and see if what I can do here. What if they ask you, what's the maximum height, all right, that the ball reaches? Okay, but we'll just say what's the maximum height. Okay, so this is how you need to, an, you know, analyze what's going on. Okay, well, what are they really asking you for? Well, if they want the maximum height, they want to know how high that ball went, they are looking for the y coordinate of the vertex. They're looking for the y coordinate of their vertex. Okay, so basically you got to find the vertex. All right, so let's do that in a different color. All right, so I've got to find my vertex to answer this question. All right, so figure out what the question is asking for and then put it in context of the math. All right, so we decided it's the vertex. All right, so I'm going to do that negative b over 2a thing. All right, and see, this isn't going to be nice because they're decimals, okay? but we can still do it. A negative 1.18 over, probably need to put an equal sign there, two times a negative 0.01. All right, so yeah, yucky decimals, whatever. Grab your calculator, divide that out. Actually, this is going to be a negative divided by a negative. It comes out to be a positive number, which makes sense, right? If this is my origin and I go to the right, it should be a positive number. Okay, so it comes out to be, I believe, 59. That came out really, really nice. So it comes out to be a 59. Okay, assuming my math is right. Okay, and then what do we do with this? We take this and we plug it back in to get the y coordinate of that vertex. So I'm going to plug in f of 59. And again, this would definitely be calculator. You're going to crank this out because we're not doing this by hand. All right, 59 plus 2. So you put that in your calculator, see what it spits out. And I believe it is approximately 36.81. And if this was in, if it's all in feet or whatever, it could be feet. All right, let's not label since I really didn't put any labels on this. All right, let's just say max height right there. In the context of the story problem, they would indicate what all the measurements were and that sort of thing. Okay. So this point is 59, okay, right here would be 59, and then up 36.81. So I'm going to go ahead and relabel this. This is 59 and then 36.81. So we can kind of visualize that's that vertex right there. All right, is everybody good so far? All right, now I am going to Hold this over so that we can look at that drawing because I still want to look at the drawing. Still have a room to write. Let's go all the way over here. Okay, now for a question part B. Okay, let's say they ask you how far away from the kicker. does the ball land? Okay, so how far away from the kicker does the ball land? Okay, so here's the kicker. He kicks it, it goes up, it comes back down, it lands here. So the distance from here to here. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to read the question and then come back to the picture and think, okay, so it's asking for this spot right here. Well, in math, what is that spot? That spot is the x-intercept. Okay, so they're asking you basically for the x-intercept. All right, now the way we find the x-intercept, we've done this algebraically earlier in the semester. What do we do? We plug zero in for y and solve, right? If we're trying to find the x-intercept, we plug zero in for y and we solve it, okay? So now this equation, not necessarily gonna be a nice one, 
All right, because here's my function and this f of x is the same thing as my y, right? So technically I have y equals negative 0.01x squared plus 1.18x plus two. All right, so I got to plug zero in for y. So basically I'm just setting this up. So then I have a quadratic that I need to solve here. Okay, now, obviously we can't solve this by factoring. It's not gonna factor nice, okay? I could multiply through to get rid of the decimals. All right, or I could just say, okay, so I'm going to use quadratic formula because quadratic formula works. That's probably gonna be the easiest way to go. All right, so my A coefficient is gonna be that negative 0.01. My B coefficient is gonna be the 1.18 and my C is gonna be the two right there. So I probably just to make it quicker, I would plug into the quadratic formula. Now, in case we don't remember it, I am gonna write it down here. Uh, negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so if we don't remember that from algebra 2, there's the formula. All right. Um, again, this from here on out, this is all pretty much arithmetic. All right, I'm going to go ahead and plug the numbers in, and then we're not going to actually do the, the algebra part, the arithmetic part. So negative 1.18 1, 1 plus or minus that, if we remember, gives us two different answers. All right, so b squared, 1.18 squared minus four times a, which is that negative 0.01, and then times c, all right? And then all over two times whatever my a variable is, which is negative 0.01. Okay, so again, this would be one of those where you'd grab your calculator, you're gonna plug it out, work it out, see what you get, all right? Now, stop and think about this, okay? I'm gonna tell you what the two answers are. When we do this, we get two answers, right? Because of the plus or minus, that's right there in the quadratic formula. And if I'm finding the x-intercepts, shouldn't I find two, right? Because here's one x-intercept, all right? But then don't I have another x-intercept that's sitting right over there? I have another x-intercept, okay? But this x-intercept for the story problem doesn't make sense, right? In math, if I'm just looking at this as a quadratic, yeah, I should have two of them. It crosses the x-axis in two places. But when I put it in the context of the story problem, okay, this one becomes obsolete because he kicks it right here, all right? And so it doesn't it doesn't ever hit the x-axis or the ground over there because he's drop kicking it. All right, so the two numbers, all right, when I get this, when I solve this, I get approximately a negative 1.65 or I get 119.65. All right, and again, if this is in feet, if it's in meters, whatever it happens to be, okay? But when you solve this out, you get a negative number, which corresponds to this x-intercept, which obviously we don't want because it doesn't fit our story problem. And then you get a positive number, which then corresponds to this, okay? Now, at this, so this point is 119.50, this is 59, all right, feet, meters, whatever. Okay, now, normally if we were in class, I would make you guys answer this, but we're probably not going to. Okay, so a lot of people have looked at this and went, oh, well, if this is 59, then why can't I just double it to put this number? Because if I take 59 and double it, okay, if I do that, 59 times two, all right, 18 carry the one's 118. So why can I not, if this is halfway in between, if this is halfway in between, why can't I just double this number to get this? Anybody want to take a stab? Are you still awake out there? Someone want to unmute their mic and talk to me? Take it, that's a no. I could make somebody volunteer. Okay, so I cannot just double this. Okay, it's not going to work that way because why? This is the center but it's the center of the parabola. It's not the center from the y-axis to this point. It's the center of the two x-intercepts, all right? And there's this smudgy little bit over here, all right, which has to be taken into consideration, all right? So literally, I've had people in the past sit here and go, well, why can't I just double 59? I'll get this point over here, all right? And it's because you're not taking into consideration what's going on over here in the story problem. Okay, so... Um, Obviously, you're going to have to use 
probably finding the vertex, you're probably going to have to use quadratic formula because it has to do with quadratics. All right, let's do a part C. Okay, let's suppose they ask for, um, I don't know, at what height was the ball kicked from? Okay, so what if they ask you that question? At what height was the ball kicked from? All right, so take, take the story problem part. Go back to your picture and then try to figure out, well, what is that? Okay, he's drop kicking the football. So it's this point right here. It's asking for basically the y-intercept. All right, so it's asking for the y-intercept. All right, and then mathematically, how do we find the y-intercept? Okay, we've done this algebraically for a long time. We plug zero in for x and then we solve okay so we plug it in for the opposite thing okay so let's go ahead and write down our function and again that f of x is the same thing as y so i can do y equals negative 0.01 x squared plus 1.18 x plus 2 all right plug in zero for x so i'm going to plug in zero there and there negative 0.01 times a zero squared, 1.18 times a zero plus a two. All right, well, this is way easier than the part B because that was quadratic formula. Anything multiplied by zero just crosses out. Anything times zero crosses out. So that means y equals two. So if it's two meters, two feet, whatever the context of the story problem is, this is zero, two. All right, so that point right there turns out to be zero, two. Okay, so two, whatever. All right, so um, like I said, I obviously cannot do one of every type of story problem that you're going to deal with, okay? But a lot of the projectiles are very common with our quadratic equations, okay? So my recommendation is draw the picture, okay? Try to visualize, write on it as much as possible as what's happening in the application that you are aware of and then correlate the things that we find. We find y-intercepts, we find x-intercepts, we find vertexes, all right, in both with the x and the y-coordinate. So everything they ask you is going to be something that we find in math, okay? So correlate it to what we find in math, and then that's the math you're going to do to get your answer.